Well, uh, again, Andy, th thank you for, for joining me here and I uh, really appreciate your time. Um, hope you're staying warm out there. Uh, pretty uh, pretty nasty cold weather right now. It's uh, not, not ideal for building homes, is it? No, no, no. There's some inside work we can do, but uh, the exterior stuff, uh, just not, not fun. If you'd really, really like to find out how durable your tools are, you use them outside on a, on a day like today, but uh, you know, everything's cool this now and batteries just don't do well in this temperature, plain and simple. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't do very well in this weather either. So um, yeah, just wondering if you could introduce yourself a little bit, uh, Andy, uh, talking with Andy Lindis, owner of Lindis Construction. Um, wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, how long you've been in business and just tell us a little bit more about your company and, and uh, where you build homes and, and uh, what kind of products you uh, specialize in, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, um, we, we do build a, a home or two every five years or so, but you know, our, our main core business is in the replacement contracting. So interior modeling and exterior modeling, roofing, siding, windows, kitchens, bathrooms, uh, leaf guard gutters. We, uh, in the Twin Cities uh, office, we have uh, just a little bit over 150 employees um, that specialize. Uh, my deck guys only do decks. My window guys only do windows. Uh, I have two brothers also in the business. So the three of us own the company together. We're all second generation and we've been running the day-to-day -day operations for about 10 years. We've expanded to nine other markets with key employees that eventually have bought us out in those areas. So in Cincinnati, Omaha, Des Moines, Madison, Milwaukee, Green Bay, Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, have uh, all expanded with our leaf guard product and roofing products. Okay. And you started out right here in the Twin Cities area, was that correct? Yes, yep. Uh, 1979, uh, the Twin Cities metro area, our office is uh, just on the other side uh, of the border in Wisconsin, but Minneapolis, St. Paul has been our, our number one market for a very long time. Since, since 79, that's where we've done almost all of our work. Okay. Well, you've seen a lot of changes since the 70s uh, in terms of home building. And um, boy, back then, as I recall, I, you had a really different market in terms of interest rates and things of that nature. Uh, um, you know, I don't know how much of a connection you have to what the business was like back then, but um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about uh, how things have changed in the last 40 plus years. Oh yeah, um, I can tell you, I think I, I have a budget for the company that my mother and father did in 1990. And it's, it's really funny to look back at like what we were, you know, we were, I, I remember when we got our first computer and no one knew how to run it. And we had to all learn how, how to run it. And we're on our, on our fifth building, you know, way back in the seventies, my, I, long story short, I'm fourth generation in my home right now. Mm -hmm. And the shoe closet in my house was my dad's first office and the door there, he had an old interior door. He turned up on edge and put in there and that was his desk. And our old hay mound was where we kept all of our siding materials back in the day I, I remember as a kid that was uh, like a jungle gym for us climbing the mounds of foam and siding that were, were back there and we get yelled at by my dad and his crews a lot because we'd break the corners off of foam and make their jobs harder because we were being little kids and 16 percent interest rates is something my father talks about on a regular basis not just 16 percent interest rates but was happy to get a 16 point or 16 percent interest rate and uh, been through our fair share up and downs in the economy but there's one thing that we've figured out over the years that remodeling seems to be a lot more steady than new construction. So that's why we focused in on that. People are always looking for help inside their homes. And we've been able to, for the last 15 years, put ourselves on a you know 10 to 25% growth rate year over year after year. And uh, we're, we're still uh, wondering when that's going to top out. Haven't, haven't found the top yet, but we've been on a steady growth for, like I said, about 15 years now. What, what are you seeing right now? What's in strong demand um, during the pandemic? Are you seeing more home offices and things of that nature? You know, I, I think a lot of the home offices 
at least to start was a lot of your do-it-yourselfer. I think uh, those types of remodeling projects is why the the Home Depots, Menards, Lowe's had record years. Mm-hmm. And 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 if you if you ever step foot in those stores, you wonder if there was an actual pandemic going on or not because there were wall-to-wall people on on the weekends what we've noticed is three season porches getting turned into four season porches uh kitchen remodels room additions even little things like windows gutters uh crawl spaces that seem musty we we've we've gone into all corners of our houses now as we try to separate and find our space to work or or whatever and we're noticing a lot more things about about our home we were, you know, there's a lot of contractors around the country that are hitting the panic button in March last year, and and they're, they're reading what they're going to have to do with employees, what the COVID pay is going to be, and and they started cutting and stopping advertising, and some of the best advice uh, I received was just, we don't know what this is, hold pat and, and see what happens, and then next thing you knew, we were, my my estimators, by the first week of April, were booked for the entire month of April. We couldn't take on any more estimates. That's how many people were, I mean, we were all in our houses. We were noticing things that we never never had. For lack of a better term, my people were calling it uh, falling in hate with your house because we'd show up at these places and people were like, I hate this about my house. And and then we'd try to find a way to fix it. And it, uh, it was a, feel very fortunate that we were able to do what we did during a, during a pandemic and that we were deemed essential and, we were able to keep working because, you know, we added 25 people. We ended up the season plus 25 in the Twin Cities markets for employees to kicking on. And we're currently trying to add another 25. Mm. So, you know, I feel like we've been able to do our help, part to help the, the local economy grow. And we're, we're buying stuff from suppliers. And we try to source most of our materials locally. Like our, our roofing comes from Minneapolis. Our, our siding comes from Two Harbor. Our windows are made by Marvin. Uh, uh, we are quality, quality edge. It's all Midwest companies that we're supporting. And manufacturers are the scary part in the whole equation. Be 100% honest with you. The, the, the one unknown is how the factories are hit by COVID and, and what the supply chain is actually doing. We were, we were yeah. built to be pretty efficient. We weren't a built to all of a sudden need twice as much as what we needed before. Yeah. So that's been a struggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I wonder if you could uh, dig into that a little deeper. Um, what I'm seeing out there is, uh, I guess just to back up from home building had, uh, and I'm sure remodeling as well, had uh, a, a pretty strong year in 2020 uh, with the permits being up from the year before here in the Twin Cities. And um, just it, it think one of the few bright spots in the economy last year. And, uh, but at the same time, um, we're facing a, some pretty stiff breezes in the in the industry in terms of the the supply chain, as you mentioned, material prices. I believe mm-hmm. National Association of Home Builders said something like, nationally at least, uh, this is adding sixteen thousand dollars to the cost of a new home just in the lumber prices. I'm wondering what you're seeing on the ground here in terms of the supply chain and how that's impacting prices and schedules you know um the last two weeks the the amount of price increase letters that we've received from manufacturers is unlike any almost any year that i've experienced so i don't think i was really hopeful that it was going to come back to earth but you know any petroleum-based product seems to be going up now and i think the wood products are going to come back to earth a little bit but they're talking sixteen thousand dollars just more in just lumber prices. Now you you factor in the, the the plumbing costs, the electrical costs, all of the other the window costs, the roofing costs. So roofing prices are going up anywhere from five to twenty five percent in in shingle manufacturing. And if petroleum products, this is what was explained to me on a conference call last night by the shingle manufacturers. The, the, the pipeline was a big deal, and and our supply chain with Canada is a big deal when it comes to petroleum products. And so if, if that continues to go up, roofing is, is going to go up. Any vinyl product is going to go up. Any of the plastic products are going to go up. All of those products are going to start to increase. So I think lumber is going to come back down. But the, on the other side, mm. it's, 
I have a hard time thinking, I know people are putting the brakes on, on buying home improvements. And I know some people are putting the brakes on, on building houses, mm -hmm. but I'm still looking at it, wondering if it's going to be cheaper at this point next year. I really don't think it's going to be. I think, I think we might be here for a little bit longer than we anticipated. Now, having said that, I do know an awful lot of people that had some foresight mm -hmm. and did some pre-buying and some purchasing agreements in 2020 to ensure that there aren't the price increases put on to consumers because you can imagine and if say i gave you an estimate on something to do in october mm -hmm. and and we're looking at it and looking at it november he gave me the go ahead hey we're going to start right away in the spring then i have to come back to you in the spring and tell you that it actually went up 20 percent, 25 percent material prices did it's not a fun conversation to have mm -hmm. so the manufacturers and the supply chain has really worked together to look at what we have and, and what we can do to best help the consumer without hurting the supply as much as uh, we heard it last year, because that was the, one of the biggest problems in the fourth quarter for a lot of contractors was just getting material to install. We all had work to do, but some of them couldn't get roofing, windows, garage doors, flooring, plumbing parts, countertops, you, you name it. There were some things that you couldn't get. And I know some builders right now are not locking in pricing until a month before the project. They just can't tell the homeowner because they don't know. They, right. The unknown is what we, what, what scares everyone. But trust me, there's, there's plenty of contractors that are doing their due diligence up front that it's not going to hurt as much as it, as it could. But there's risk there involved as well. You know, I, I signed a purchasing agreement that I have to live up to. And uh, so if the bottom falls out, I'm, I might be stuck holding the bag. But we'll see. I'd, uh, I think that's a, I'd rather take that risk than, than having to pay 25% more for my materials in August than I do right now. Right, right. And how about from a scheduling standpoint, I talked to at least a, a single family, or sorry, a multifamily developer last fall who talked about one of his projects. He said that, you know, lumber prices had tripled um, in the past few months and mm -hmm. and this actually um, was just one of the one of the obstacles to even getting uh, started with construction are you seeing any kind of delays in terms of delivering on your projects or how are you handling that uh, just from a scheduling standpoint you know uh, fourth quarter very much so uh, of 2020 scheduling days were we were pretty lucky that the longest delay we saw in materials was like 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. And we had a big enough backlog that we could kind of work within that and just make sure that every week we had material to install. There was a month or so there where I literally had window guys with, a, we had a little over $2 million worth of windows to install at that point. And there was a month there where I'd put all of my crews on guys on one job because that's the only materials we had to install. They, you know, a factory shut down because of COVID, they weren't delivering materials or they were only, say you had a, a job with 25 windows to do, you get 10 windows one week, 12 windows the next week and so on and so forth. It was, there's some juggling, but yeah, for the most part, everybody worked their tails off. You know, that's uh, if there was one bright spot about COVID is that we weren't going on vacations and stuff like that. So working weekends was no problem. When we had the work, we did it. And that, so that was, if there was one bright spot in the, in the whole year, I think the amount of work that we wanted to do was, was through the roof because we weren't doing anything else. There's nothing else you could do. You couldn't travel. You couldn't go on vacation. You couldn't go, couldn't go out. You couldn't really do half of those things anymore. It's uh, it was a different year. So we'll see. I have plenty of people that have built up their PTO for 2021. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You know, one of the big issues I'm hearing about, too, is just a lack of inventory in the uh, number of existing homes for sale here in the Twin Cities. And um, mm -hmm. wondering if you could reflect on that a little bit and how that's affecting the um, market for new construction, as well as remodeling, for that matter. Well, uh, just the land prices. You know, um, if you and I were sitting here five years ago talking about country land going for 8,500 an acre, we'd have bought all the $1,500 an acre parcels we could have, you know, at, at that point for farmland. You're talking, it's, 
it's it's astronomical for for 10 acre parcels five acre parcels like 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 even sourcing like on the outskirts of the metro like on the outskirts of the west metro on the outskirts of like the east metro hudson wisconsin compared to like waconia the prices for land and lots and building lots you know i uh, i heard a story yesterday guy bought the lot for $65,000 acre an acre lot a little on, under an acre and he's a you know not not a rich man but he does okay he's you know a very modest home he's trying to build he's going to general contract it himself and he's going through the materials and he can't get it under 180 bucks a square foot doing most of the work himself with one other guy mm -hmm. that's that's so that and then and that, that's even hard to get a loan for at times it, think about that the 2000 square foot house at 180 bucks a square foot that's going to be hard to finance without a, a very large down payment even especially when you're factoring you're paying 70 grand for your lot mm -hmm. that can be a difficult thing and and there's no wonder why these prices are going up because of what you said the inventory is there people that want a brand new home are paying that mm -hmm. they, they they are and and the the there's been an exodus from some of the more populous areas and especially where we live, where they are really trying to look at the outskirts and as people try to factor in schools and other things that are available to them, there's going to be a, a whole lot of factors that go into the, the expansion of the suburbs, I think, coming here. But yeah, and as more the, people the, 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 yeah, the stop is going to be how much it costs. Yeah. I was going to say, as more people are working remotely, you can live just about anywhere now. So. Um, that certainly makes sense with uh, the, the current situation we're in. For, for, uh, for sure. I mean, even my company who we build and work on people's houses, I have at times 20 people working from home now that were in management and project management and things like that. And we're, we've gotten much more efficient. Like our plans to expand our office to get more office space is gone. We don't, you know, that's, there is, again, hey, we found two bright spots today. What happened in 2020? I mean, people love working from home and my people are actually taking care of our customers on a more efficient basis. Mm -hmm. Let's just think of my, my appointment setters. I, uh, and, and people that deal with my customer service before we'd have like one person take some calls on the weekend as people emergency basis. And I open it up to unlimited overtime and you can do it from home. All of a sudden, we have zero messages of return on a Monday morning. I mean, we got people sitting at home on a Sunday and, and taking care of customers that we've never had before. Not that I want people to work 24-7. There has to be a balance there. But, you know, um, it's that's why it, nothing was mandatory. We left it up to them and said, hey, we'll pay you overtime and and we'll go from there. Unlimited overtime, people people jumped at the opportunity. What, what do you see um, looking ahead in 2021, do you see, um, what do you see in your crystal ball in terms of uh, remodeling and, and home building? Uh, will things continue on this track or? Um... I think you're gonna see another uptick in remodeling. I think remodeling is going to stay on that incline with home building possibly taking a little bit of dip from what they did in 2020, just because of the the, the financing issues that people are going to run into with how much it costs to build and the fear of what the what ifs, if like I assign this deal, we're not going to build August, but materials go up. I think you're going to find that that some people hit the panic button a little bit and hold the hold off mm -hmm. on building. And then they're going to find out that they should have built because it's probably going to be cheaper in 2021 than it was in 2022. I just, I just don't see, I think lumber is going to come back to reality, but there's going to be enough of an increase in, in labor. There's going to be enough of an increase in petroleum products that actually the, the, those two things, whatever the lumber prices come down, that's going to wash that out and, and end up costing more. I really do think that it may be the cheapest time to build right now in the next three years. Mm -hmm. It very well, very well could be. Labor is going to be going through the roof, although you're seeing more young people get into our industry. Um, those hundred thousand dollar educations. I mean, there's, there's there's so many examples of people wearing a tool belt making seventy five to one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year. If somebody becomes a very good craftsman in, at what they do, that and 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 people are hearing about that and seeing those examples and knowing that if I learn this and apprenticeships, you're getting paid to learn. When we like 
you really, for three years, if, if you work with a company and learn what you're supposed to do and become a craftsman, mm -hmm. one, the, the entrepreneurship opportunities in our industry are endless. And, and no matter whether, no matter, no matter gender, race, creed, doesn't matter. I work with way too many of all, uh, that are in the, in the trades, owning businesses and being successful. And then you have the, the true craftsmen that just want to wear a tool belt all day. And they're happy working the 50 hours a week, but there's an opportunity to make that. Like I said, that 75 to a hundred and some thousand, like get into the six figures, mm -hmm. being a craftsman, being a, being a somebody that installs roofing, being the, somebody that's a finished carpenter, being somebody that's. That, that does decking, that, that opportunity is out there right now. And I don't know a lot of industries that can tell you that, to be honest with you, it's for, for no schooling, learning a trade, it's, you're seeing more people come into this industry right now. It's still not the biggest problem that everybody was facing in 2020. You know what every radio station was reaching out to us for mm -hmm. was employment advertising. Mm -hmm. Now, right the opportunity to grow right there because of what other industries have done. I have more applicants than I've ever had. That's a scary thing mm -hmm. considering what's going on around. It makes me feel good that I have the opportunity to help that many more people and we can we kind of get our, our, our pick of the litter, so to speak, mm -hmm. but that's a worry. That makes me wonder what the economy is actually going to do, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff you couldn't get last year, which leads me to believe that there's still a lot of money out there and a lot of people spending it. Yeah, yeah. How did your father get into the industry? Was he, he obviously saw an opportunity there mm -hmm. years ago. Um, he was a pig farmer. In fact, that's like the house I live on. Like I'm sitting in, I remodeled the, the shed here, but this is the old pig barn. Mm -hmm. And he was raising pigs. We had, I think, 140 head uh, at, at one point. My earliest memory is my dad giving mouth to mouth to a piglet. As you know, that piglet survived. That, that was that was money on the table. And then he started doing projects on the side, mm -hmm. besides farming, siding a house here, roofing a house there, putting some windows in. And and we come from a, a long line of tradesmen, both on my mother and father's side. Mm -hmm. So, and all of a sudden we're making. He's making more money doing that. And then the pork prices were so fluctuating. He got a good deal. Sold all of his pork with a few other farms to another guy in the area and just went all in on, on construction. And I, uh, his very first employee is still working for us today. Jimmy Olson, who was a class, she, he was a classmate of, of my mother's. And now he's our do it all around the office guy, just supervises everyone. Um, I think this is going to be maybe his last year mm -hmm. of working with us, but, uh, oh. I remember, uh, he held on to a lot of paychecks back in the early days until he could cash them and, my, might have been eating breakfast and dinner with us because that's how we could make sure he was fed because he couldn't cash his paychecks. So mm -hmm. those types of relationships were, luckily we, we've come a long way since then, but yeah. I think that's, uh, you hear those stories in most of uh, American startups. There's, the, the, there's those people that help you along the way and Jimmy's definitely one of them. And 40 oh. years now, he's still been work, still, still working with us. What a great story. He's been treated well, obviously, to be with you guys that long, so. That's, yeah, he cares. He's part of the team. He's family. Yeah. Oh, and how many employees do you have now? I think we're up to right now in just the Twin Cities location. We're at 152. And we're trying to add some employees as we speak. And then we work with a variety of subcontracting crews as well. Electricians, plumbers, some uh, exterior modeling people, some excavators, things like that. Great. Well, uh, it's been a good conversation. Before I let you go, did you have any other thoughts on uh, some of the challenges that we might be facing and uh, just, uh, you know, above and beyond what we've already touched on? Um, I know there, there are both opportunities and challenges that await. Uh, Governor Dayton, you know, said two, three years ago, he, uh, when they set up that housing task force, wanted to see 300,000 new homes built between then and and that 2030, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So the demand is out there. Um, looks like we're making some progress, but I don't know if we're going to hit that goal. But you know, wh what do you what do you see? What do you see long term? You know, um, technology is going to play a big, uh, bigger and bigger factor into everything that we do. 
Um, we, we're noticing that there's going to be some of the energy efficiency things that are coming down the, the pipeline. You're going to see a lot more people using, using things like, like solar, which in Minnesota still isn't a very viable option, but you know, those, those Tesla roofs are, are finally getting installed. And I'm working with a company right now out of Florida that's having really good results. And I think that might actually be an option at some point in the Twin Cities. And you're going to see people staying in their existing homes and retrofitting them to be smart homes and retrofitting them to have solar and, and adding, adding things on. The other thing that I think you're really going to see more people do is living well spaces, uh, workout rooms, steam rooms. Uh, they're going to design bathrooms that are going to be more spa-like. Their, their kitchens are going to be designed around prepping food and having food. Because these are the questions customers are asking us. When we ask them to dream big, it seems like they're all looking for things to improve on their homes that's going to make them not only live longer, but make their lives better. Yeah. And so I think you're going to see a lot more people, when it comes to remodeling, those are going to be some of the bigger projects that I think we work on in, in 2021 and beyond. Yeah, that universal design is a big deal and people just allowing people to stay in their homes longer and things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, can... aging in place is, is never going to go away. I mean, we're just we're going to become an older and older population, hopefully for a, uh, a much longer time if, if things go well. And I think they will. I think we're going to see that age creep back up again. Great. Yeah. Well, Andy, it's been great talking to you. Um, thanks again for joining me. Good luck. In, uh, hey, thank in, you. In the coming year, and yeah, uh, wish you lots of success. So, I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. If you have any other questions or you need a follow up at all, you, you know how to get a hold of me. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye bye.